I don't think we need to do another coat. I think that one coat that got put on there in the last episode, well, that was good enough. And, uh, yeah, my, my experience also is that the thicker the paint is, the greater the chances are, or is, of uh, pulling the paint off when you remove the masking tape. So uh, I think we'll just leave well enough alone here. I think it looks pretty good. Well, it looks pretty good from a normal distance, but when you're looking at it up close like we are right now, well, maybe not so good. Okay, once again, we don't need very much here, just enough to hold it on. I've got the good side of the gear up, as near as I can tell. I think that's up as far as it can go. Looks like it to me anyway. Now you will remember when I was doing these photo etch the other day, I was saying I couldn't see the difference. Well, there, there is a slight difference. They are mirror image to each other. If I put, the, put them so that the little bumps across the top are at the top, uh, then this end is slightly different from this end on the other one. This one is A47 and uh, the other one is uh, still in the tin. So we'll use this one here. If we turn this like this so that it's the right, right way around. Okay. Now it looks like this should go. I was trying not to bend it. It's going to be really hard here. I have to try and straighten it out. Anyway, how can I straighten that out? I have to do it off camera, sorry. Okay, they, they bend extremely easy. Now, if I got that right, you okay, know, this is supposed to go, you know, I'm noticing that this side that's up right now is kind of shiny, and this side is textured. I would imagine that the, that the detailed side has to be out. Now, I think this has to go something like this um, I'm thinking this I'm, I'm assuming it goes in there it's it's not real clear here I wonder if I can find this in Stefan's book if we can see what this thing is supposed to be and where it is on the real thing, or at least on the, on a, you know, a, a good drawing, then maybe we'll know better where this is supposed to go. It could be that it's supposed to go here, or it could be that it's supposed to go on the, on the uh, top here. Now there are several drawings here that show that crane. Like this one. This is the best one. We've referred to this drawing before. And I'll zoom in as close as I can. And that piece of photo etch, it doesn't show anywhere on the top. Okay, let's just sort of lay our little part beside the uh, drawing. And, uh, yeah, you can, you can see here that there, the, this photo etch piece, which is right here, does not lay across the top here. In other words, it doesn't have to go across the top here. It must go along inside here and I think the best way for me to uh, fasten that in will probably be with the Tamiya Extra Thin. I'll just make the plastic sticky and it will hold it in place 
and then later when it's uh, sprayed the paint will also act sort of as a glue strange but true yeah okay okay I think I got them the bottom one is almost perfect the top one it could be just a little bit more to the right but at a normal viewing distance you can't see that it's not quite in place uh, yeah and I was having a real problem getting both ends you know at the same glued in place at the same time like in, in to stay in position at the same time so then I realized well hey just glue one end in let it dry then move the other end into position glue it down and the whole thing probably took about oh 15 minutes I would like to have shown you with the macro lens but it was just too finicky okay we'll see if we can do this one on camera for you no promises how it's going to go here just a minute I gotta put my other glasses on Okay, I'm going to just reposition this here. It's got to go like this. Okay, now this little uh, piece here, this little slot here, it's going to slide in the bottom of the crane, and this little rounded piece that's coming out of the bottom that's where that little tiny piece of photo edge that you see right here that's where that's got to go on oh <laughs> now I think the smart way to go about this is is to put this uh, entire crane together get all the parts glued onto it and then try and put that photo edge piece on the on the uh, where it's supposed to go and these ones here you notice there's a little peg right there well that little peg is supposed to go into this little square hole and I think probably the easiest way for me to do that is just pick it up with my fingers and do it off camera so that's what I'm going to do and I'll show it to you after okay this one here is all glued into place all the parts but this one here I've still got this little piece on uh, to glue on yet but what I want to do is I want to reposition the camera if I can because I want to show you just how precise some of these little parts have been molded here so we'll just see if I can't reposition things a bit I'm going to do my best not to move this out of your field of view here okay you'll notice that there's a little little like a track that this has to go on I see that see how precisely that's made and uh, this piece here is supposed to be, according to a, a, another drawing that I saw in the manual, supposed to be up about, about there. Same as this one. And we'll just glue it in place there. I know it's not straight. I'll do some on the other side too. We'll straighten it up after before the glue sets. Now I have a tendency to put on way too much so I'm going to assume that because it looks like I put on too little it's just right. Right now our little crane is being held upside down. In my test tube is uh, those two little hooks that we took off the other day. You can just barely see them there. And, uh, yeah, we got to uh, try and glue them on the end of this uh, little peg here, or this little uh, part. I'll zoom in on it. Right now it's upside down. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the solvent. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make the end of it sticky. Well, once again, I'm going to stop talking. I'm just going to show you. Now I gotta try and pick this up somehow without it 
pinging away on me. I have to pick it up by the hook because the other place oh my you know I have already lost these twice and I have found them twice I have been so lucky now how can I maybe if I go like this no I realize it's out of focus for you but and by the time I pick oh no oh my goodness Okay, as you can see, I found it. It had pinged about, oh, four inches away. It was still on the manual here. I'm just gonna refresh on this because it will, uh, the glue will have evaporated or the solvent will have evaporated. And I'm gonna do it a little differently. I'm not gonna use the tweezers. I keep forgetting about this glue tack. Okay, now, stay on there. Okay. Well, I dropped the toothpick and I've lost it again. Oh, my goodness. Okay, this is the fourth time now that I've lost it and found it. Okay, well let that, that, uh, that glue evaporate and then I'll re-glue it. I don't want to try and uh, put any fresh on right now because it might just wash it away. Well, I have a decision to make. Do I try and reinforce it with CA? Or do I just leave it for, for the paint? It kind of looks like it is glued on there. I'm afraid that if I try to use a, a little tiny droplet of CA the CA is just going to completely cover it. Uh, right now there is a, you know, some, some detail showing there. Not that anybody is going to see it anyway. Do you remember in yesterday's video where we had that little segment on stopping the lens down and why? Well, here's why. I've taken and I've opened the lens up and adjusted everything. Uh, right before it was at f57. Now it's at f4.8. And uh, you can see the difference. The depth of field is dramatically lost when you open the lens up all the way. Now granted, the little hook might be slightly sharper, but only slightly sharper. Well, here's the thing. It came off. I was trying to get it back on. And I think I lost it on the floor. Yes, I do have the other one. But you know what? I'm just finding this too frustrating. These things are so small that unless you're looking directly at them, you can't see them. And, uh, you know, if it's that small, we can do without it. I don't think anybody would have seen it anyway unless I was to point it out. So let's just move on. Well, I'm thinking I may as well start where the most difficult part is, and that's at the very back here where it's sort of down in behind these little 
pipes that are coming up. I imagine on the rail ship these were not so little. I think something like this should work. Let's make sure there's not any any air gaps there. And then we'll just go right around. Okay. I'll do the same on this side. Make sure it's nice and tight here. Maybe, maybe I should redo this one. There we go. Now, the idea is I use my jeweler's screwdriver here as a pointer. So I just want to do the, the top. I don't want to have the black go down the sides. So I want to make sure that the tape is, uh, you know, sealed all the way across the top here. Yeah, it should it should work. I'll do the rest of it. Okay, and now a little bit of frog tape. I wonder how they came up with this name frog. I think I cut too long a piece here. Now, unfortunately, it does. This frog tape is going to be wonderful for not leaving residue, but it's <laughs> it does not stick as well as the other kind of tape. Probably going to have to do a lot of overlapping here. And remember, do not push in on the spider. Well, I got my Tamiya tape here. It should be safe. Now I think as long as I don't let the airbrush get in too close, I don't need to worry about it uh, spraying where it's not wanted. At least that's my hope. Okay, this time I think we'll just do one drop of thinner. Just enough to wet its whistle. The idea of priming it with the thinner is not is not to uh, thin the paint out, it's just to help get it started. It's, it probably doesn't mean a thing, but anyway. I'm not going to do the real time thing like I did with the silver gray. You've seen me do this before. Let's just get it done. Okay, we'll see how that looks after it dries. Okay, our airbrush is all cleaned up. And let's just see how much touch-up we're going to have to do here now. Try and get this off without damaging anything. Oh my, it came loose on me here. Maybe I'm going to have to sort of cut it off. I think I can probably grab hold of it in there and get this uh, masking tape off. As long as I remember, don't grab it from the top. What's that little white spot there? Oh, it was a little piece of dust. Okay, well that was good. 
All right, I got to take, and uh, you can see right here, I'll, I'll, I'll zoom in on this. Well, it didn't do too bad. You see a little bit on the front there, up at the top. But on the side here, it leaked a little bit. And also on the back. But that shouldn't be too hard to fix. I hope. Now I've already shaken this up. Probably going to take two coats here. Oh, I'm afraid this is going to show up. There's going to be a big difference between the... Although maybe once it evaporates, uh, it'll shrink a little bit. Well, I can see right there where I got it onto the black, so now I'm going to have to take the black and go along the edge, but I think it'll be easier to do that. Maybe put it on just a little bit lighter this time. I don't think I'm going to try to improve on the front there. I think the improvement would be offset by the fact that you'd be able to see the brush marks. It's, uh, it's actually not too bad. But of course on the side here, on the top, i got to paint that black. Just wait a few more minutes for this silver to dry. Okay, I have that glass slide that we used as a sample before. This is the, uh, the other side has the paint on it. And I think if I was to just put a little drop right there, uh, that should be good. I don't think we're going to need very much here. I'm going to do it away from the funnel. Okay, there we go. We should be able to see that. And... Now I don't want to take too much time here because it seems that this paint does uh, dry very quickly here. So. Now you can actually see it better than I can. I don't know if it's running down the side or not. Okay, let's just leave well enough alone there. Oh shoot, I just checked my monitor. I can't win here. It's either one way or the other. I guess I put it on too heavy. One of the viewers sent me a package of these things. They're kind of a, like a, sort of like a Q-tip. For cotton buds, only they're they're smaller, and they don't fray out. They're from uh, Tamiya, and I think that uh, maybe I can use it kind of like a felt marker here, just across the top. Is it going down the side? I hope not. It is so hard. Well, it's better than it was, at least looking from the top. Well, you got to remember here, we're looking at this extremely close up. I mean, look at how big my fingers are in comparison. Um, yeah, let's see what it looks like sitting on top of the, the rest of the funnels, you know, the, the main funnel. Maybe we're not even going to notice this. At least, that's what I hope. Okay, this is the view that you would get if you were seeing it in its case. Okay, there's a little little notch here. It goes with a little key thing on this side. So I guess it goes this way. All right.
Okay, I think it's acceptable. Let's uh, change the background here so it sort of stands out. Yeah. I think it's going to be okay. And let's just hang on to it now until we actually need it. No use screwing it on now because I'm going to only end up damaging it. This piece is going to going to have to be handled a lot yet. And that is it for episode 190. All being well, we'll be back tomorrow and we'll spray those little cranes a dark gray. You know, those little cranes that I couldn't get those tiny little hooks on? Thanks for watching. And all being well, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>